Hilltop Glove Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Hilltop Glove Podcast. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Laddie Howard, also known as L. Howard, a father, entrepreneur, and lobbyist. Laddie is a man of many talents. In 2015, he founded L. Howard Leather, driven by his passion for creating exceptional leather goods using traditional techniques. Since then, L. Howard Leather has maintained its commitment to producing handmade leather goods of the highest quality, using only the finest materials and craftsmanship. From leather bags, wallets, clutches, and belts, L. Howard Leather creates only the best of the best. In 2022, Laddie Howard, now the CEO of the company, expanded the product line to include fragrances that tell his unique story of coming of age. These fragrances are meticulously crafted with a blend of essential oils and botanical extracts to evoke a sense of nostalgia and memory. Each scent captures the essence of growth and and transformation, telling his unique childhood experiences during his childhood summers in Sumter, South Carolina. Besides being a lobbyist, Mr. Howard is currently the Director of Regional Governmental Affairs for the City of Columbia as well. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, really happy to have you. You're the type you guys, of this is his first to. podcast, yeah. so this should be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, to say the least, I'm going to I'm enjoy this. Though. And Laddie's my friend, so Go you ahead, know we, we chop it up all the time. <laughs> so this is like a regular day. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted you guys to meet him because he's incredible. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. about this. But yes. tell us a little bit about yourself mm-hmm. for the people that don't know you, um, your background, okay. upbringing, influences. Well, it's real simple. I'm, I'm, I'm from South Carolina. I'm a country boy. Mm-hmm. I grew up between Sumter, where I'm from, and Bamberg, which is where my uh, my mother's family is from. And so I um, have a lot of experiences that come when I talk about my childhood. I'm usually talking about both places, ah. Sumter and, um, and Bamberg. Bamberg. My, both sets of grandparents, one from Sumter, one from Bamberg. Um, finished high school in Sumter, went to uh, South Carolina State University. Excellent. I left South Carolina State and went to law school. I'm an attorney. Mm -hmm. So I finished law school at the University of South Carolina. And while I was in law school, I started, I became a lobbyist. Mm -hmm. And so I started lobbying when I was still in law law school. What I discovered about myself once I finished and started traveling, because I like, I love to travel. Hey. I mean, and I love to travel (laughs) over the world. So uh, when I was, when I started that with my wife, I would always kind of do the same things. I would always, if I'm in Mexico or Italy or Savannah, Georgia, which yeah. is where she's from, I always go to the leather shops and cigar shops and I gravitate towards music. So it was funny because that eventually became my life, you know, oh. fragrance and, and leather. Uh, it became my artistic expression. I never did anything like that much when I was a kid. I used to draw, draw a little bit. I would always carve and, and do little things, but it came out later in life for me. Um, so as I, as I developed and as I continue to express myself and the things about kind of my personality just came out and it became wine and leather and cigars and, and fragrance. He really oh. creates an experience, you guys. The I can L. tell, man. Howard experience. I say this, his voice is creating an experience <laughs> right now. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I've had to bob- borrow your voice. Man, my just voice for a changed in while. the eighth grade. I didn't even know my voice changed. What? My voice changed in the eighth grade. A girl, I had this crush on a girl named Nancy McFarlane. <laughs> and she was a little older. She was in school with my cousin. Yeah. And my cousin got her phone number for me. I'm like in Bamberg, I'm in the country. Can't see her. And oh. I got the phone number. I called her up. And first thing she said was, You have a deep voice. And it's crazy, you know, because when I was a kid at my grandmother's house, my 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 father's mother, the ones that lived in Sumter, her friends would always call her. And I would, you know, when you're a kid, answer. we didn't have cell phones no. and like that. So it was a big deal to answer the phone. So the phone would ring, I would run to answer the phone. And so I would answer the phone, give it to my grandmother. And my grandmother's friends would say, oh, your granddaughter's with you today. Oh, your granddaughter's wow. visiting because my voice was high. Mm-hmm. Sounded like a little girl, yeah. You know, as a kid, and so, but in eighth grade, man, it just all that in. changed. Flip. <laughs> yeah, flip. Wow, people wow. Thought I was a little girl answering the phone when I was a kid. Dang, it was crazy. So, how did you deal with that? That's this is this is a side question, but how did you deal with that change? Um, 
with like were you being treated differently and et cetera when you when your voice changed? I had to ask this question because as a man, no, 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 my voice wasn't. I mean, it was just that they couldn't tell they if couldn't I was tell. a girl or a boy because you know, wow. kids, you don't know, you yeah, don't know, no, you don't yeah, know, you don't, no gender, you can't yeah, tell. There's no masculinity nah, or femininity, nah. femininity to it for a girl. Yeah, it's just a kid's voice. And so it was nothing that real. No, I had to deal with it when it changed. Yeah. I don't know if that's what you're yeah. asking. Yeah. yeah but when my point. voice changed, it became something to deal with because first it was really, I know it sounds odd, yeah. but it was a shock to me because I didn't realize that my voice had changed. You were still right. talking and being yourself. I was being myself. And then she told me that my voice had changed. And I was like, and then I started, and I, I hate the way I sound. Shut up, really? I, oh yeah, I hate the way I sound. I don't like listening to myself. None of that. In the same way. Ew, yeah, y'all are weird. Yeah. Both of y'all. And I'm telling <laughs> y'all don't like... sound bad. Really? You don't like how you sound? Mm -mm. I'm no, telling you, I, I, I know how to use, use my it. voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't like listening to myself. And so it sounds weird. like uh, fingers, uh, what do you say, fingernails on a uh, yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. For me, it For kind you. of does. Yeah. yeah. Man, I'll, I'll say, did you have any siblings growing I have up? A, I have a, um, one sibling. Okay. We're very close. Her name is Catherine, or Wendy. Mm -hmm. um, everybody calls her Catherine. Um, She's but she older. Lives no, no, I'm the oldest. Um, she's four years younger than me. She lives in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, I'm a husband, two kids. Excellent. Great husband, beautiful girls. Um, her husband is my fraternity brother, as a matter of fact. What's your so fraternity? I'll let you guess the other. Oh, there's only one. <laughs> no, my God! There's only, there's only one. one. He said there's only one. Can there's you tell by one. his confidence he's a Scorpio? Yo, you're Scorpio. See, yes, of course she's going to know this. All right, she's going to call it. See, Alpha Phi Alpha? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, man. There's only one. <laughs> I already know all this. Look, good Lord yeah. Jesus. But that's cool, man. That is so cool. I'm telling you like this. Um, a, a lot of folks that we speak with always like to see confident black men. Yeah. It makes, uh, especially um, growing up in the South, um, I didn't, uh, my brother and I, we moved from here to New Haven and Wilmington, North Carolina, and back here. And uh, my father, the way that he raised us, always to be comfortable and confident in yourself and to also always be able to express yourself, right? Not to be afraid to do so. It's always cool seeing a self-actualized grown black man. Yeah. Because there are not many. Right. No, Example-wise, right? Yeah. And it is sad. Because that's not, that's not our essence. No, it's not. Our essence is to be leaders, it is to be confident. Mm -hmm. That's sad. How did you grow into your confidence of, like, your art forms and the different projects that you do? You know, I don't think you're anything without your family. Good or bad, mm -hmm. right? Preach. So my preach. mother, my father. Um, my mother, I mean, both equal, but my mother in particular um, was just very insistent as I grew up that we have experiences. So my, my parents, you know, we couldn't travel internationally. I mean, we're you know, basically, and I say basically because, you know, there's a fine line sometimes between middle class and poverty. And, and try, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, I grew up, had a great childhood, no problems. We traveled, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the U.S. My mother made sure that I read all the time, that we traveled all the time. I saw her reading all the time. Um, and, I, you know, I grew up in the church. I grew up in the black church. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to do your Easter speech and do all yeah, these things. Yeah, yeah. All the things that we take for granted now. I grew up with those as a kid because we didn't have all the technology. So playing outside and being involved in activities if your parents are really concerned about you. My, my mother in particular, I will say this, my mother always wanted us to be a whole lot more than she was, oh, right? Yeah. Um, and she's a great woman. And she, you know, my, both of my parents went to college and are educated. Um, but, you know, they're first generation, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah. so they traveled and really instill that. When you're a kid, they get on your nerves. My mom got on my nerves because <laughs> she was wearing me out, man. She was like, between my whoopings and, and, <laughs> and pushing, making sure I had my, but my mom made sure I had everything. Yeah. You know? But like you were the oldest, so you had to get those, yeah. those yeah. first couple of whoopings. Oh yeah. You had I to got, be the example. It had to be drilled. I hate to say that, but we were just talking <laughs> with somebody, that's what he was speaking about. His, his elder brother and sister, they didn't make any mistakes. And he said, he, come on, he had to get all of the leather. Man, yeah. my mom said I had to get it. But, <laughs> See? Yeah. But it wasn't just my parents, man. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I, you know, Community? I'm blessed by my family. I mean, mm. my grandparents. I, you know, if you, when we get into the talking about the, the bags, um, each piece is named after a family member. Let's get and into so, it. Yeah, get so, into it. Tell us about it. She's ready saying, to get to the we, bag. I'm ready to get to the leather. <laughs> she's ready, though, seriously. But he knows my, ready, my favorite is the fragrance. She is ready to get to the leather. That's a whole topic yeah, that she has. Right. But the reason that my bags are named after 
obviously family members. It's not just paying homage to them, mm-hmm. but like my grandfathers. Which so I knew my great grandparents. Oh, really? Right? Yeah. yeah, I knew my great grandparents. Um, and each one, you know, just imparted something to me, particularly my grandparents, because I spent so much time with my grandparents, and mm-hmm. not just, you know, I we're we're from South Carolina, so I didn't travel in occasionally during the holidays. Mm-hmm. I mean, I spent time here with my with grandparents them. growing mm-hmm. up with them. So, you know, not just my parents, but the things that grandparents instill, especially with someone my age, you know, you have a lot of things that we are a bit removed from now. But you think about the older generation. It's not that long ago. It's not that long ago. And, and a lot of things that they had to deal with societally and racially yeah. and mm-hmm. You know, the things that they couldn't do that I could do. I remember my grandfather would always say, boy, you going to be a farmer? Because he was a farmer, right? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, my grandfather, not not a sharecropper, a farmer. A farmer. Right, yeah. right. A real farmer, yeah. One grandfather was a sharecropper. One grandfather was a farmer. Wow. And the grandfather that was a farmer, my mother's father, he had seven, they had, he and my, my uh, grandmother had seven children. And every child that wanted to go to college went to college. They went to the military, went to military. And he did that farming like 400 acres of land, he had his own tractors. Mm-hmm. I used to sit on the tractors with him during summer, wore the seat of my pants out, riding on the tractor with my grandfather. Yeah, if you don't know about that. Yeah, 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 that, that right. bumping, yeah they're bumping. Yeah. That, that Massey Ferguson, <laughs> I mean, that, that steel <laughs> shoulder, I used to sit on that thing for hours and hours, man. But, you know, when you spend time like that, especially with older generations, uh, there is no way to explain how, it, how and what it imparts. It's you. invaluable. Mm-hmm. It's invaluable. I like that you said that because, again, we always have a that we have. Somehow it just occurs. It's nothing. That's why I say God works in mysterious ways. Whenever we have our, our um, podcasting sessions, and the one thing that is coming through today is generational gaps in communication skills, mm-hmm. um, proper networking, um, presenting yourself in a way that people will take you seriously so that you can move forward in whatever ventures that you want to set out to accomplish. And I know the first interview that we had today with Chef Jay, one of her things that she talked about, she was talking about being around her grandparents and how they raised her and the stuff that she learned and the things that were imparted upon her. And I was talking about the fact that um, my brother and I, like our grandmother raised us for a couple of years. And I tell people all the time, they would be like, oh, man, my grandmother raised us? I was like, no, no, I'm so happy that that happened because we got to meet a lot of our older family and friends, uh, uh, relatives rather, but we got to learn certain lessons about preparation um, being um, timely with things, your management of your time, resource usage, how you need to make sure that you're ready to go out into the world, the things that are now, that we take for granted, mm-hmm. that we don't need to take for granted because in a switch, it could go back. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, growing up, we had a different mindset set and perspective than a lot of the folks that we grew up with. And it was a good thing because now we're getting to see how it's important to our day and age now and what we do And so speaking with somebody like you, who's also telling us these things, I think it's important specifically for Bridging the Gap because our podcast is geared toward making sure that millennials have an understanding of that and that we have some kind of grasp on things to help us become successful in what we want to do. Because a lot of us, we grew up and we never had a handbook. We never had somebody to sit down and mentor us properly on what we should do because, I hate to say it, we had crack that occurred between 1984 and 1995 that was really bad, and it kind of like wiped out a whole generation of folks. And we kind of missed out on a lot of education, unless you were lucky enough sometimes to get um, tutelage from the elder generations, and et cetera. So when when folks listen to this and they hear you talk about that, you don't realize you're giving them gems. Mm -hmm. They're going to be getting these gems, and you're going to be getting out to um, a group of people who normally wouldn't get to sit down and have these conversations. And I know that's when Tamaya said, hey, y'all got to speak with Lana. Yeah. Y'all need to speak. We need to be on here. I understood what she meant by that because, of course, she's very well cultured on these type of things. And so she understands the importance of people hearing that, like sitting on that track and wearing that seat out. I know what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about, right? And people are like, what yeah, do you mean? Man. Because we have family members that own farms mm-hmm. and the importance of being able to make your have your own food. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're quote unquote poor. If you can't have your own food, you're rich. Right. But and out of everything you, that he does, mm-hmm. I feel like you you make everything yourself. Like you engineer, you craft everything, and that yeah. goes back from yeah your yeah. childhood. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like you watched your grandparents do everything from start to finish. My father. Yeah. yeah. 
So and you have the it's vision drilled into you and the vision to be able to, to problem think. solve. Yeah. Oh my goodness, problem Grace. solve. Critical thinking and problem solving skills is something that's lacking from our generation mm -hmm. and the ones under. It's because things are so handed. Yeah, microwave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we get things it's across our culture, though. It's yeah. not just yeah. the younger it's, generation. It's, it's us. Don't I think there's a disassociation with having to do something mm -hmm. and having arrived. Yeah. Thank and, you. And living, you know, a good quality of life. And I think a lot of times we confuse um, standard of living with quality of living. Mm -hmm. mm. And elaborate. Like, what's the difference? Elaborate. Yeah. Well, we have a very, I, I, I believe, and this is just Laddie. But we have a high standard of living in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And from most of the places that we come from, we have a very high standard of living. And nowadays, you know, after after running water and electricity Good back point. in the 40s and 50s, Good point. you know, our new standard of living, uh, where it used to be plumbing and lights mm -hmm. from, my, from my father and generations after him, for us, it's Internet access yeah. and the ability mm -hmm. to have a cell phone. Right. And if you do not have Internet access today, mm -hmm. it is in many ways the equivalent of not having running water and plumbing and electricity Great from, point. from yeah. generations Great point. ago. Mm -hmm. And so now, though, um, all of those conveniences, all of those technologies, all of those things that we have to have, I'm not saying they're bad. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, there's a miracle to our technologies now that I appreciate. But we have a high standard of living when it comes to you got to have the latest phone and you got to have internet access and everybody's driving a, a, a new lease car and yeah. you know you got to take this trip and you're not doing anything on the trip but going to a resort so you're yeah, not seeing the culture. you're not seeing the culture. But you got to you got to yeah. post pictures on Instagram. And so there's a very high standard of what it means to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, but our quality of life sucks because all we do is work to spend money to pay bills mm -hmm. and to have these conveniences. That basically we're so worn out from work from working to pay the bills and to upkeep the image that we are successful when most of the times all we're doing is just paying the bills. That's it. Yeah. To so, have access. To so you have the standard of living, mm -hmm. but your quality of life is not there. Right. It's not at. It's not equal. It's not equal. Yeah. That's what Chef Jay was saying earlier. Like I said, this is a theme to like she was saying, um, quantity over quality. She says, please aim for quality. Yeah. Um, because of course her big thing is health, nutrition, and wellness. And um a lot of us we don't we don't realize that we're doing that to ourselves too. Yeah. Um that, that the the ability to be aware. Yeah. So I, I wasn't here for her interview, but yeah. you know, by virtue of her being a chef and what I'm thinking the tenor and tone of her conversation was, you know, just with what she does, food. Mm -hmm. You know, we eat way too much. Oh my gosh, yeah, so, be right on the money. Keep, and you keep think because preached. you're doing well, we'll go to the we'll go to Halls or yeah. somewhere else. And, oh yeah, and that's and it's great. I go there too. Yeah, it's okay? nice. I like it. It's, it's good. It's like it's nice. But I'm on. This is my eighth day. To Maya knows this. I haven't eaten since last Friday, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I go through these. I tell instances. people you can do that. They think I'm crazy. They think yeah. I'm crazy. They think you I'm crazy. It. Thank you, you Lanny. Thank you for co-signing me. <laughs> I told them. They said, "What do you mean?" I said, "No, it's scientifically proven. You don't need food for this much." They said, "For real? No, the only thing you need water." They said, "What?" I said, "Yeah, you know, your body does not need all that to run." It mm -hmm. needs to be cleaned out every once in a while. I say, cleaned out? I said, oh, my Lord Jesus. Why did I read these books? Because now I'm talking to people, and they, I sound like an they don't alien. Believe, they don't believe yeah, they don't, they believe don't think they can do it. Yeah, they don't. Like, man, if I don't have something to eat, I'll go crazy. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, But it is, when we talk about, when Chef Jay was talking about quantity over quality, you know, because we don't grow our own food, mm -hmm. right? When we go to the grocery store, most of it is crap. Yeah. Nutrient and we think we have, to, we have to have this level. If you're, if you're really successful and you're doing well, then you want to, you know, you want to go to these restaurants and you want to eat this food and eat that food. You want to do that every day. Every day is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. And so you're eating a lot of food when your body doesn't need it, mm -mm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're eating a lot of, you have a high quantity of food and you're just stuffing, so diabetes and heart problems and cancer and all that stuff that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, it's coming from us just loading our bodies down with a high quantity of very poor food, although it costs a lot. And it's presented another, in a way. Say it again. That's another yeah, part. It, it costs a it lot. It costs a lot. And so you're like, I'm doing well because I can go to these restaurants and do X, Y, and Z. Or I go to the Publix, go to the grocery store yeah. and buy my food. But the most nutritious food, my, my um, not my mother. She'd kill me if I said this. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, she makes these 
amazing tomato pies. Have you ever had tomato oh, pies? I love tomato pies. And tomato pies is so the, good. Good. So good. Nisha it. makes tomato well, she pies. She makes it again. I'll, I'll let you yeah. know so you can come try it. But Stacy makes this tomato pie with, with tomato. She's made it with tomatoes that we buy from the grocery store. Yeah. And then she's made it with tomatoes that I just grew outside in the yard. Uh-huh. Man, it's night and yeah, day different. The one from the grocery store that you buy from there, they look pretty when you buy them. Yeah. That tomato pie is watery and bland. When she makes it with the tomatoes that I grow in the yard, I mean, it's, you would think you're sitting in the middle of Italy mm-hmm. eating. I mean, they just pick the basil, the rose, everything off the vine, you know, and just put it, it was just magically there when you, it tastes that good. <sighs> but the, the tomatoes out of the grocery store, they're nowhere near. Mm-hmm. It's good, and that's the way it is with life, you know. Yeah. And I tell people, you know, um, this is something that I think is funny, and I tell people, do this test, and it's, and it's the easiest test in the world. Go to the grocery store, smell the food. Go to your farmer's market, or go find a farmer who sells the stuff grown it and go smell it. We've been growing our own tomatoes, right? I didn't know how good a tomato plant smells. It's almost better than flowers. Wow. They're very fragrant. Very fragrant. It's supposed to have a smell. When you go to the grocery store and you realize that there's no smell on any other, that means that you are missing out on nutrients. The the vegetable has not really had a chance to grow properly or they've taken certain things out of it or turned it off through GMO mm-hmm. to make it easier to grow so it doesn't like attract insects. But that smell's supposed to be that. It attracts the insects, right. but who cares? Because you get the Quality B vitamins nutrient, from yeah. the insects. If you want a good tomato, it's got to have a blotch on it. Yes. It's got to have a little section you need yeah. to cut out. If, yo, you if, the, if the bug wants it, and I want it. That's <laughs> why I tell people, like, it, that means it must be good enough for them. That's Hashtag, gonna, if yeah. the bug wants it, I want it. Because you can put it out. You put one of those um, tomatoes from the, the market outside. I mean, from, the, uh, from Publix outside. That thing would fly around and right. right by it. Like, yeah, that's not food. <laughs> But there's there's some wisdom in that, yeah. and um and that's one of the things too that I did learn from my grandmother, <clears throat> with things that she would cook for us. And I remember growing up, I had an aversion towards squash, and onions, and okra, and tomato, and all that stuff. And um, she would just like she would slowly like when we start moving in with her, it was like, well, we gotta eat this food. So she would like slowly cook it first in certain ways so we get like it. And then I realized that she wasn't buying her food just from the grocery store. She used to take us, she used to, can I tell you, she used to drive us up here to go to the farmer's market or to the PD farmer's market or to people that she knew that grew stuff and buy her eggs and et cetera oh, okay. and everything. And we thought that this was, no. oh, so this is how we were supposed to do it. And so I remember when um, moving back in and being with my father and stuff, and, he, and um, we were like, so why aren't we getting our eggs from that person on the street? <laughs> Grandma, that's where she go to get eggs from. He's like, oh, because you're getting brown eggs, blah, blah, blah. And he realized, okay, so, because that's who he raised him. That's yeah. how she did it. So he's like, all right, so y'all know now. Y'all know what's supposed to happen. Yeah. So my dad, his big thing is he cook, he'll cook healthy. Oh, my you know word. Egg, yeah, egg from the farm? Yes. I tell people this all the time. People don't understand what eggs are supposed to taste like. Yeah. Like the flavor, most people eat these eggs out of the grocery store. They're not eating what I grew up with. The flavor is completely different. And then I didn't know that you didn't have to like, Say it. Put them in the refrigerator. Yeah, like, yeah, somebody no, gave yeah. me eggs from I was like, what? You keep them out. She was like, no, no. keep them out. I was like, yeah. are you sure? Yes. yes. It's sealed. It's, man, <laughs> a, the flavor on on just the organic, yep, just the yeah. chickens that are running around the yard mm-hmm. is so rich. Mm-hmm. It's so, it's just, it's completely It's different. buttery and happy. Yeah, and it does yeah, have a buttery yeah. taste. It has a natural buttery taste to it. You I mean, was like, I don't yeah. have to, you don't have to add anything to it. I don't need salt and pepper or nothing like that. You're like, I really? I so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, all right, my fault. I bought okay. Yeah, so you can have fun. We, can, <laughs> <laughs> we like the country, as yeah. you can see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah man. So, I think, you know, the, the great, for me, artistically, the thing about that is um, everything that people aspire to, Mm-hmm. You know, they doctors, lawyers, you know, billionaires, millionaires, whatever. Um, people aspire to have that money for any number of reasons. But the number one thing that people want to do is to acquire stuff that comes from the country. Yeah. Oh, the, my good. Good point. Yeah, Great all point. the beautiful artistry. Yeah. yeah. Their landscapes painted on the countryside. Sometimes you have architectural paintings, yeah. but it's the, the art and the mm-hmm. expressions are things that come from just nature and basically. That people want to dine on, you know, you're cultured if you're a wine drinker, right? Yes, true. Wine is nothing but farming. Yeah, it's the grapes. country as you can get. It's as yeah. country as you can get. Mm-hmm. They're they're aspiring to have the best wines from all over the world. People want to go to a, a restaurant. It doesn't matter 
you know, people think that when they're in New York or Chicago or, or somewhere really metropolitan and very big and exciting, it's like that's where the best is. No, all of that stuff that people bring to the cities for people to spend a bunch of money on, it's curated right. from the country. country. Right. Yeah. Whether, it be, whether it be South Carolina, somewhere in Italy, or somewhere in Spain, or somewhere in Africa. Yeah. You know, it's all curated from the countryside. Good point. And really so point. for me, um, that is kind of what melded my, my artistry with just the way I grew up. It's like I just started expressing, you know, what my life and what my experiences have been. And to me, they're very beautiful. So you had the experience That's, basically that people are paying millions of dollars to right. have. Right. You so came from. I'm about to say, let's talk about that. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, leather yeah. is like one of the like oldest, you know, professions in the world. Can mm-hmm. you tell us about leather how pro- you got started with making leather and mm-hmm. your attraction to it? So, you know, I kind of told you about my attraction to it uh, because as I started traveling and experiencing the world for myself, I was naturally drawn. I've always I've been a serious wine drinker for a long time. What's your favorite so, uh, type of wine? Favorite grape? Um, so I don't have a favorite. Oh, right. no, okay. I mean, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, I I, I appreciate wine. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, wine goes with whether or not I have friends coming over and we're just drinking wine. Great point. I love to cook. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love to be in the kitchen. So, if I'm cooking something in particular, whether it be, you know, fish or poultry or quail or steak or lamb chops, you know, then that's going to determine what, what I you're drink, drinking, what yeah. I drink. Mm-hmm. And so I've just I develop, you know, my appreciation or my taste for particular wines. You know, obviously there are levels to everything and quality mm-hmm. to everything. So I curate what I like based on drinking it. But I don't have a favorite. If it's hot outside and it's the summer. I'm not drinking red. I'm going to drink white. Very true. Right? White, so, yeah, white rosé. It's yeah. easier drinking, is, yeah. you know. But if it's cold, if it's like this, I don't know what happened today that we're back in spring it's, again. Yeah, I don't man. Know. You see how we came dressed <laughs> today? Columbia. I thought I was supposed like, to have Welcome to South yeah. Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, just, you know, if it's, if it's cold outside, then I, I love, now, I do love wines that most people that don't drink wine like I do, they can't drink it. That's why I asked, because, yeah. like, when you, when you actually drink wine, yeah. And you've had a chance to taste and go through wines, you'll start appreciating certain tastes. Like, I like funky wines now. I did not before. Before, I, like, I, I worked at a very fine five star restaurant. We had a huge, extensive wine list. We had to taste everything. We had to be trained on it, right? And so, this specific, well, I'm going to mess it up in my head at the moment. Um, it's from Eastern Europe. Mm-hmm. There, it's a white wine. I'm going to mess up the name. I have to make sure I look it up. But it tastes, it has a smell like old, dirty socks. What's the name of the wine? What kind um, of wine? Um, gosh, I'm going to give you. what you think it is. Uh, I think it's, it's not, it's not Gruner Bettliner. It's not, it's not. It's Gewürztraminer. So it's a right German. on the money. Right it's on the money. Gewürztraminer is yeah. a German wine. Yes. And so, I mean, it's, I like Gewürztraminers and I like Rieslings. Oh, yeah, you're right on the money because my wife, she's yeah. a big Riesling. She loves her yeah. dry Riesling. But, um, dried Riesling. Yeah, dry. I don't, she doesn't, yeah. I don't like sweet stuff. But um, uh, I was just like, man, I didn't, I didn't think I would like it because like you smell it. And I'm like, ooh, what is this? And I taste it. I'm like, oh, amazing. Amazing. Mm. Other than that, I like to drink Pinot. That's my favorite thing. I drink salt blancs and Pinots. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love how it tastes. But, yeah. but so the, the um, I guess you asked me, how did I start yeah. with leather? And so it was when I traveled and started learning things like, you know, I'm, I naturally love wine and I would always end up in the leather shop. So um, I remember going to Mexico. We were in Acapulco and left Acapulco and went to Tasco, Mexico. Tasco, Mexico is where all the silver mines are. Oh. So when you look at silver, mm-hmm. real silver, silver has a stamp on it. It says 925, mm-hmm. right? The 925 um, signifies that it's, it's pure it's silver. And a lot of that silver comes from the mines in Tasco, mm-hmm. Mexico. And I remember finding a leather shop in Tasco, Mexico, right below this this church. When it, now everything's on the hillside. Oh. And all the buildings are white, red terracotta roofs. It is so, I have pictures. That's right, so think. pretty. Yeah. yeah, you know what it is. Um, so it's a v- very beautiful place in Mexico. And I found this leather shop right beneath this church that was built in like 1492. And it still had the gold on it. God, yeah, you know, when you get out of the U.S., man, you find real history yeah. and real architecture. Yeah. Um, but, you know, trips like that, you start discovering, man, I really love 
the leather. I have the bag to this day that I bought all those years ago from Tesco. But and then when I started dating Stacy, we she's from Savannah, and there is a store there called Satchel. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a That's store. His daughter's called, name. Uh, Satchel is my daughter's name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But oh. Satchel was a leather store. Okay. Aww. And so, and, th- and this is before I ever did anything with leather. Because okay. I, didn't, I didn't start working with leather, teaching myself until 2016. Okay. Right? Oh, so, wow. It's pretty recent, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I, was, I was actually um, doodling, drawing. Um, people say they're drawing. I call them doodles. But I was actually doing that. And my son needed a bag because he would always have his stuff in my bag or my wife's bag. And so when that happened, I was like, okay, well, I'll make him a bag. Just because I was doodling, I, you know, I, I'm a wine drinker, like I said, so I would not, I would not do the, um, I would not drink wine as much as I like it yeah. when I got stressed out. Gotcha. So being an entrepreneur is very stre- it was very stressful, it can be very stressful. Yeah. And so instead of drinking wine as much as I love it, I started doodling. So if you come to my studio, you'll see a lot of my doodles and, and things throughout the studio. He could draw y'all. He yeah, can really draw it. Don't. I like it ain't, call them doodles. No, like, I like, like calling them doodles. Yeah, it ain't no doodle. It's like good <laughs> it's full drawing. blown sketches. Yeah, like. uh, I just do. I, I I have. I'm quirky, man. So, <laughs> I I'm quirky. I ain't angry about the modesty. It's a good <laughs> thing. It's a good I, thing. I draw all eyes or all lips or yeah. all noses, yeah. things like that. And pray, yeah. But yeah, the yeah, point yeah. is, I stopped doing that when I started making the sun back for my son, mm-hmm. and then I haven't doodled since then. So I I mean I have these people love them. Um, but I don't doodle anymore. They're all in a book or somewhere. I have bunches of them. Um, but I started doing leather, mm. and people started asking for it. And that's how I started. I, it wasn't intentional. I didn't intend to do this. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, it's like on social media. Social media is becoming, became big, and so you're keeping in touch with people that you grew up with. And I would say, hey, I cooked this today, or I'm trying to make this leather bag. Oh. Right. Just, you know. Just to show you. This, some, some, this is what I'm doing today. Yeah. I don't consider myself a chef, but sometimes I share that I cook this today. It was the same thing with leather. Gotcha. But then that Christmas, I had people say, hey, you showed a bag. Can I get one of those bags? I want to give it for a Christmas gift. And I was like, what? You want to buy a bag? You want one of these? And that's, that's honestly what happened. I was stitching everything by hand, and, and I bought a sewing How machine. How hard is that to do? He does do? everything by hand. Like, well, the stitching well, by hand is yeah. t- is very difficult. With leather, yes. Yeah. yeah, you have to punch it. They're they're called. Um, yep. They're ch- they're chisels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, or pinking irons. Mm-hmm. So you that's how I do it. You would have to make all of the holes and then go. That's not sustainable. Not I'm about to say I've watched people do this overseas, right? They, 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 they yeah, watch they, the leather process and things are expensive. And he also mm-hmm. does his own dyeing, the dyeing process. Mm-hmm. I was talking about that. Yeah, so that bag starts off the same. I brought a couple of cases on the table. Okay. Yeah. All of beautiful. those start off the same color. Wow. Can we show the cases? Can we see it, Kev? Wait, in the, let me hold it up. The cigar cases. So, yeah, explain to the different type of uh, products that you do offer, offer so for women. All so, the, I design a lot of different things. Yeah. Right. So, I have, uh, I just kind of classify between bags and accessories, mm-hmm. but I'll, I'll make, Saddle bags. This this is a, a briefcase. Mm-hmm. Um, I love making weekenders. Uh, the week the weekenders that I make are named after my grandfather. That's for the name. My gotcha. backpacks are named after my grandmother. Gotcha. Um, and then every piece has a name, mm-hmm. and it's named for somebody in the family. But I, I do the accessories like the cigar cases and belts, um, and several other things. Some leather uh, cuffs. Mm-hmm. Um, what crossbody bags? Yeah, and some mm-hmm. things with the website and with things. Mike should have been bit. here today. Right. I'm afraid for my hand feelings Mike under the weather. He would have loved guy. to see this. Yeah. He loves those leather bags and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So between the bag, the bags, the accessories, and now the fragrances, those are the, the three things that I design. Beautiful. Well, what I want to do right now is give you the chance to, to show some of the stuff that we have on the table, um, specifically uh, the book, the bag, and then we can go through these fragrances so that we can get some scents on. Okay. We never had a chance to do this. This is really <laughs> cool, man. So, so uh, yeah, man. Uh, so, what would you like to start with? Uh, whatever you'd like to. Um, that book. The, the book. So the book is just a is just a um, compilation of some of the designs that I've done, um, and not all of them are. I've I've designed a lot of pieces, man. I, I I make every single piece, and I have pieces all over it. 
Wow. I can't make all of the pieces all the time. That's what I'm So the book is kind of an archive of some things that I've done in the process of doing them. But they're not all active designs that someone can just call up today and get. Mm -hmm. And you make your own patterns? Yes. That's wow. Satchel. Hey, Satchel. That's, yeah, that's my daughter. <laughs> uh, she's also one of my models. Oh, that's, hey, you got to put the children to work. Put the children to work. And I have a question. So if somebody did want um, a bag or et cetera from you, do you have like a season that you do, like a season of bags that you do? or So I'm runs? getting to that point now. So I do make every single piece and mm -hmm. we're going to production at some point. I'm trying to choose that production facility. So I, because I, I can't. You can't sustain it. I can't do it with, yeah. uh, you know, Christmas comes around and people start asking and they, you know, they don't prepare for it. In this last minute, and they're like, hey, can I, I get know that that's what I was about to say. Yeah, like, I can't just sometimes. pump that out. But so I'm, I'm, I'm actually moving away, and I've been trying to do this for a year, year and a half now. Mm -hmm. I'm actually moving away, trying to move away from making all the pieces because it's just not. I, I gotta get a piece from you before you stop <laughs> making pieces. <laughs> so I can get a, a, an official original. And and another thing that I want to I want to point out, I thought this was interesting, is the symbol that you have here the logo the logo yeah, scorpion. Yes. can you explain that scorpion logo so my my brand story is told around um l11 okay so l11 is kind of it en it encapsulates everything about me and what i've created um i was born on the seventh day of the 11th month my name is laddie i'm a oh, lawyer i'm a lobbyist wow. you know i do leather um, wow all of that so that was not the, the it was not set up yeah, and L is an upside down That's seven. And yeah. seven, is, seven is the day that I was born. Um, 11 is the month that I was born and also my last name because the H is an 11 with a bar. Bar in. thing. And so it just tells the story of me, of, you know, how I was raised and became a lawyer and then found my passion um, in leather. Um, and it just tells the significance of the, of the letters and the numbers. Um, and the scorpion, obviously. Me being a Scorpio became a natural symbol for me to express the L11 story. Oh, man. Man, the crowd, I'm he not just wanted lie. to touch it. Had to. He just wanted when to touch it. When you walked in, I'll say this, man. When you walked in, great smell came in the room. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, That's like the, the fragrance an of it an and et cetera. Experience. I was just like, you got to be kidding me. I have to see. Whoa, stop playing with me. <laughs> nah, seriously. So, all right. So, this is a piece that you made yourself? I make every single piece. Yeah. So this every is, single piece. I'm trying not to make every studio, single piece, but I make like, every single all piece. All day. You put all of this work in. Every, I dye the leather. I stitch the leather. I make every oh pocket. Oh, my goodness every. gracious. And I'm telling you, man. Yeah, it's like solid. one of one. That's a one of one. Yeah, you can tell it. That's solid. I feel the smell. No, my favorite. Um, I mean, I always love the leather, but, you yeah. know, I'm more right. attracted to the fragrances now. It's time. So this a, every ready? time I go to Gladi, I'm way. like, I need a new scent today. I'm going to get <laughs> out of her way. I'm going to let her have her fun. So definitely tell us about um, the fragrances and like, how'd you get started crafting it, making it, how long does the process take, branding it? Yeah, the, the fragrance is real. I've always been in the fragrance. Mm -hmm. um, I have a pretty, I have a pretty sensitive nose. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, everything in life is really organic, right? So. You don't just decide, hey, I want to be, I want to do something cool, right? I mean, <laughs> I think people think what I do is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I didn't. Purposefully. Yeah, it wasn't what I always decided I wanted to do because I think it's dope. I um, started doing the leather, which was very natural. And, you know, there, were, there was a period of time when I was just doing leather. The first thing, black, white, young, old you know, artistic, not into artistic. There are two things that people always say as soon as they walk into the studio. Um, first thing people always say is, man, this is a vibe. Yeah. And the second thing they always say is, man, it smells great in here. Mm -hmm. It does, right? y'all. I'm telling you. <laughs> that is, and so I, and it's just like, I don't like the way my voice sounds. Yeah. I don't smell my studio. Gotcha. He's right? there so all the time. I'm there all the time. Yeah, you're like, this is normal. Yeah. But it was like the universe, like, talking to me because yeah. the first thing people say when they walk in is, man, it smells great in here. And they're talking about the leather and they're talking about the incense and just the experience of coming to the studio. And so that was kind of the thing that started really laying the groundwork, although I'd always been into fragrance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, you know, what I 
set out to do. Never set out as that. But then as people came into the studio and I, and I realized that they, they wanted to take part of that experience with them. Mm -hmm. And so that really got my mind flowing more artistically with what I was doing. And I realized, I realized that I could do it because my, my family bought me a scent that they made for me for Christmas. Oh, wow. And so that got me, that act got me in the, in the uh, studio where they had them done, had mm -hmm. them made. And I went and I was there with the people that owned it. And the guy was like, man, you're really good at this, right? He could literally smell something. Be like, yeah, that's apple cider. And just you're start really naming stuff. Yeah. Old factory I have a, senses I have a sensitive are hot. nose, yeah. Yeah, I have a, a sensitive nose. Wow. So, but, you know, I'm from the country, man. You can, you know? yeah, you got a chance to smell real smells. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Yeah, so yeah, side. you had experience. So anyway, that started the process. And then, so for me, um, once you start that process and you start expressing yourself, mm -hmm. what has become unique about my fragrances, and I've gotten this from the industry, not from myself. Uh, I had a guy come down that, that works with Cody. You mm -hmm. know, Cody owns Gucci and um, Tiffany's and all. They, they, all of those since Burberry, the house. they're under Cody. Yep, right? when a, guy, a guy came down from there and, to visit me. And he's like, man, your experience, you telling the experience, the story of where these fragrances come from is something that no one does. Mm -hmm. So you can buy whatever, even the, even the larger brands, the Tom Fords and all the scents that people wear. You know, they smell, some of them smell good. Yeah. But people have no sense of them. And when they come into my studio, they actually understand why I crafted the fragrance the way I crafted it. Because it's coming from a place, I'm not just saying vanilla and peaches smell good together. Mm -hmm. I'm actually telling you the story of how I grew up in my grandmother's kitchen. You're not a metrics man when it comes no. to making sense. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's about me imparting, you know, those, you know, man, when I was a kid, I'm 11 years old, right? Yeah. People can't relate to this much, but you now my grandfather was a farmer. So he would, co he would go to the farmer's market and he would come back with bushels of peaches on the truck. Now I'm a kid, I'm out there with my cousins and my grandmother didn't work. She, we're on a real farm. She would go out, if we were having chicken for dinner, I would catch the chicken, she would, she would wring the chicken's neck. And that's what we would have for dinner. We had peaches on our batter bread at night. Peach preserves are just fresh peaches or canned peaches. My grandmother canned those peaches. Yeah. And so what happened for me was my grandfather would go to the farmer's market come back with peaches. I'm watching Soul Train on Saturday because usually that's when we Yo, got it done. Oh, yeah. And my grandmother and my cousin's out there cutting up peaches and putting them in these large dish pans, you know. They take up two eyes on the stove. And my grandmother had these, has these peaches cut up on the stove and she's putting bags of Dixie Crystal Sugar in them. And we're watching Soul Train. And one eye is still open. Um, and they, you know, they're, they got to keep everything away from the stove, but they're sulfurate because they have a straightening comb and she's doing my, my at the same time. Hair, yeah. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that experience of fragrance, right? Because when you're, when you come from a family that cans figs and peaches and pears and apples, that's an olfactory experience, man. That's just, right. it's just common to the way I grew up. Yeah. So I'm telling that story, but then, you know, when I tell that story through nectar, how innocently I started loving peaches in my grandmother's kitchen, how it became my favorite fruit. It also became the symbol for what me as a, as a man identifies with the most, which is women. Uh. <laughs> and so nectar on the leaf became yeah. my coming of age from falling in love with the fruit in my grandmother's kitchen to falling in love with the fruit that is a woman. Uh. And so I had to express that differently when I went to nectar on the leaf. Oh, and wow. So, Oh, she's waiting for this. Let's smell it. Let's smell it. Yeah, let's get a smell on. I got to ask you this because I think you would understand this. A lot of people think I'm crazy. They don't realize this because you grew up in the country. The smell of tobacco curing in a barn. Mm -hmm. It smells like sweets, like, like honey smacks. Tobacco's really sweet. Yeah. It has a good smell. Mm -hmm. I don't want to burn it, but I like how it smells. So I'm not going to show you nectar first. You, okay. you, I'm going to show you lovers in the leaf. All right, lovers in the leaf. Lovers in the Leaf is um, tobacco. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. It's serendipity. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tobacco, honey, um, cherry blossom. Okay. And I'm not going to give you the whole formula, but it's, it's <laughs> I, I made this fragrance because it's what it says, Lovers in the Leaf. 
and I enjoy tobacco uh -huh. and I, I enjoy the essence of smoke sometimes. And I wanted a fragrance that could allow lovers to share that smoke and express themselves throughout the evening and have a fragrance that kind of accentuated that and expressed that at the same time. So I made Lovers in the Leaf, and that's this first one here. <laughs> we got to zoom in on his facial good, expression. <laughs> Let's give smell it. Look at him. Look at him. You know nah, you want to smell come, it. Come smell this. <laughs> nah, because you don't get to get that. Watch this. Smell that, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, because I know what he's talking so about, good. the scent, the smell. No, you took it and made it. That's an elevated scent. Mm -hmm. Then nectar. So this is the, uh, and there is a story that goes along with this. One day we're going to do the story on video. Mm -hmm. And uh, Let me keep this over here. Yeah. Okay. So this is nectar. To me, this is in it. So artistically, every, I think artists are, are telling a story, right? Mm -hmm. The artistic story for me really is, because I'm from the country, now this gets to the other side. I'm a, I'm a, um, I grew up in the church. My father's a minister. Okay. And so when, you're, when you grow up like that, you know, we have certain morals and values yes. about life and nature and the do's and the don't, don'ts, right? Mm -hmm. So being a good country boy coming from a, you know, Christian family and all that stuff, I was raised right. Yeah. I don't always obey. <laughs> but I know better. I may not do better. Yeah. But but I was raised a certain way. And as you become an adult, you realize that the way you were raised um, sets the stage for who you become, but it doesn't always define it. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is this line from our innocence, uh, which I equate with nature, mm -hmm. to the forbidden, which is what I equate with the knowledge of ourself and really expressing that regardless of how anyone else feels about it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a journey. Yeah. So for me, that journey started off very innocently with how I fell in love with the fruit, ah, which was in my grandmother's kitchen. kitchen. And like I said, the fruit eventually, there are all types of fruit. And one is a woman if you're for a man. And that's the next fragrance I'll show you. But that's the innocent, bright, beautiful. Nah, you're right. <laughs> you know what you're doing, man. Wait. <laughs> it smells like and I'm going to tell you this it doesn't it doesn't smell unnatural right it's an essence like all, most fragrances wow. are like really they're they're really synthetic yeah and yeah. they're strong because people want people to smell them when they walk in the door yeah but I think the fragrance should be an essence of you when someone walks by smelling like the same fragrance that somebody else has they go oh man that smells like and it reminds yeah. me of, right. yeah. But when someone has a beautiful fragrance, like when a woman when a woman walks by, and I'm sure women have the same feeling about men, but mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know anything about that. When a woman walks by me and she has just a beautiful essence of her, an aura that's left in the wake, I don't smell her coming towards me. I smell her like just in that instant when she passes. Mm -hmm. That is magical for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Nah, he's not lying. That's true. Yeah, this and legit. this is why I be, this is why I want everybody to experience Laddie telling the story and like come to the studio and to get the whole vibe because mm -hmm. it's a whole experience. Yeah. Like, literally, be blown away. So the story tells you how I was sitting in church when mm -hmm. when she came in, and how I just stolen peaches that morning because my grandmother had just canned peaches. <laughs> And now I'm sitting in church, and the and the preacher is preaching about temptation oh, and the wages of sin. Oh, and this girl is in church, right? Yeah. And I don't know what I can say on this podcast, so I'll be very. Anything. You can say anything. Well, I'll just put it this way: a yeah. peach. We all know what a peach. We is, know what it, you know what that right? emoji means. And so when, <laughs> so there was a very, <laughs> there was a very simple moment for me. Yeah. Being in love, innocently, mm -hmm. with the juice trickling down my chin. You know, mm -hmm. the sweetness on my tongue, yeah. really. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's in my grandmother's kitchen. I'm yeah. eating peaches. Yeah. And it's just, it's it's not erotic. It's not, yeah. But it's a total engagement of your senses, mm -hmm. which leads to eroticism. Mm -hmm. And that eroticism happened for me in church. Wow. Because there you you have nature. I believe, growing up in the country, that we are afraid of nature. 
yes. and the urges it yeah. produces, yeah. right? And yeah. so we preach against it and we do all that. And so I'm sitting in church and the preacher's preaching about temptation. That's crazy. And the wages of sin. And there's this girl that I'd never seen before. And she don't look anything like anybody else. And I just stole peaches that morning. So the, say, the taste is still there. The experience is lips, And you're tying it to that you person. And, and, the and she, Eden. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what it we is. all go through the, our own Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to put it into words and put it into an expression for people. Because, you know, sometimes we say things artistically for the first time yeah. in a way that people haven't said it. Right. Exactly. I'm able to do that with my fragrances. Um, and that's what happened for me when she walked by. And her sundress, the scent, and oh, her she had body, a sundress on, you know. <laughs> and you have Dang, this, why she do that at, at, at the church? Sundress. Immediately, what you're gonna think is that that frame looks like a peach, and so you want to have. <laughs> I this, like how he's talking. I'm gonna take his man. I'm, he's stealing man. your metaphors yep. over here. Your you analogy. You done messed like, me up. Watch this. Yep, I agree. I agree. I'm gonna talk about my wife like this when I get home. <laughs> When you when when you have that experience, man. Me when I had that experience, you know, you're shy because I'm like, I'm not a man. I'm a I'm a boy grown into a man. Yeah. But you know, our our merger with our essence and our nature, man, begins. And there's nothing wrong with it. No. There's nothing taboo. But we've been taught that these I, things are taboo. And I'm connecting with him because that's how I was raised. We we're raising. Okay, we'll take. We were raising the church. Preacher would be telling us preacher and like one of our preachers. He's an old farmer. And um, he remembered the Bible from back to front. I've read the Bible three times all the way through. I had it remember because like I wanted to, I wanted to be a preacher growing up. That's what right. I want to do, is be a preacher, right? And so I was very afraid of certain things. Like I'm talking That's virgin right. all the way up through all the way through till college and everything, right? Don't drink, not touch nothing at That's all. Right. So people are like, dang, why you act like this? I'm like, y'all better be happy I didn't become a preacher. I'd be, I'd be horrible. Y'all would not I would be hard to deal with. Listen, man, you're sitting in the church. There's a natural moment when you know, you just look at a peach in your grandmother's kitchen. And at some point after you first, after you take that first bite and realize you love it, you love the sight of it. You love the colors. Yeah. The you, curve. Know, you smell it before it even enters your mouth because peaches, you, have you know, you smell aroma. the peach, mm-hmm. you know, and then you feel the peach and this, you know, everybody knows that you know how to pick a perfect peach. If it's too hard, if it's too soft, this is a real, yeah, it's real. You know, it has just the <laughs> right firmness and consistency. Yep. So the feel of it. Mm-hmm. Then when you bite into it, man, the taste of it, mm-hmm. you know, the juice trickling down, you, all of that stuff, you naturally just go through that innocently. Your grandmother feels the same way. True. You know? But there is a moment when you see that proverbial peach and you want, you see it, you want to smell it, you want to taste it, you want to feel it. That moment happens very naturally. And that happened for me. And that became nectar on the leaf. Ah. This is sexy. Dang, you're this dangerous, is facial, man. This is facial expressions. I'll we'll have to put you on, on that commercial. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You should smell it on, though, when it when it mixes that's with That's what I was from. about to say. And that's yeah, the thing that he... The, yes. On each person, it's, it's a different, different I wear that one, man. I wear nectar on the leaf. <laughs> I love that. See, like this right here? This right it's here? It's spicy. That one? It's fruit. Like, it's what you want it. It's rounded. I think that's a very sexy scent. Yeah, it very, is. It's a very... Um, you know, to me, sexy and erotic are two... I, I, one, I don't say that very much. So yeah. when you, so I got to say sex and erotic now because whenever you see leaf, yeah, that's my code word for that. Oh, So when you see nectar gotcha. on or lover's in, yeah. you'll see, you'll notice that there are two fragrances there. The last one I'm going to show you. The first one I showed you was, um, the I mean, n- nectar was the second one yeah. I showed you. And that's just about the innocence of my grandmother's kitchen. So yeah. there's no leaf in it because that's right. just the peach. Right. It's You're just, right. You're right. Just and the, the, the nature the of me. Of, yeah, it's in yeah. there. Yeah. But and then Oud and Blue. Oud and Blue is not. Oh. And it's, it's the best one. It's very sensuous, but it's the best I'm one. not telling an erotic story as much as I'm telling the story as I see it mm-hmm. of who I think the 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 person that takes us to that point where we realize that there is somewhat of a conflict between our gentle nature yeah. and the forbidden. Yeah. And there's always a moment and there's always a person that takes you over that edge. A person that takes you over that edge, I think, has certain qualities to me, Mm. right? That's what this fragrance expresses for me. 
because I think that sort of connection with someone is really deep rooted like a tree. It has to be. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but it's expansive and it allows you, especially in the in an ideal world for us as lovers, mm -hmm. um, a woman wants a man that is going to allow her to feel and know love, mm -hmm. but to have the freedom to experience life and not be judged by it. And yep. So that's like a an expansive sky or ocean. That's the blueness of it. Mm -hmm. This fragrance is called Oud and Blue. Um, Oud comes from a tree. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, oh, you'll, you'll see when you express But this is what I think a person experiences in that moment with a person that allows them to let go. Mm. Well, you could be yourself. You're a dangerous man. Dang. <laughs> well, wait. You like that? It's like soft and subtle, yes. but still strong enough yes. to capture That's you and be thing. like, yep. It's strength and comfort. It's like, In ah. one scent, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yo. Man. Wow. So how can people like actually purchase you can go to our website, howardleather.com. Be on that website today. They can hit, you know, go to our social media pages. Mm -hmm. Type um, in L. Howard Leather. Um, on mo most of them on Instagram is L. Howard Leather. Okay. On Facebook is just L. Howard Artistry and Leather. And then, of course, the website, like I said, www.lhowardleather.com. You see, Dante Maya's over here. He's done messed her up with them scents. Dante Maya's always stealing my fragrance. Yeah, I can tell I'll she is. I would literally, I would literally I come over. I'd be like, I'm, on my way out. Yeah, on my way out. <laughs> Man, I will say, I will say this. Um, you're one of the first person that we had that bought in a product mm -hmm. like this, and the experience of the product. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, sir, amazing. The storytelling like behind yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I know you don't like your voice, but I like your voice. Yeah. So, um, I, I know the. Man, I've never seen anybody put together fragrances in this sense. Because I've seen people sell oils and all this other stuff, right. right? But to put together the fragrance, the story behind the fragrance, the the, uh, the explanation, I understood exactly what you were talking about. I went back to my childhood sitting in the pew when you were talking about it. <laughs> I was like, I yeah, I was, looking at, that, I was yeah. looking at that young lady at the church. And I was like, <laughs> I should be looking at her at the church. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to read my Bible while this is going on. So, um, And then you read, and then you read, uh, um, Song of Solomon, right? Stop playing. Yeah, that messed you up even worse. Song of Solomon. Then that messed you up even worse. I should have brought another friend. My uh, last fragrance, I have 11 that I've made. Wow. I only have four that I make available to people. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the last one that I made, is uh, it really tells my story of growing up in the country. Mm. It's called Summer in Sumter. And I can tell you the story really quickly. Okay. Um, and you got to, I have, I ramble a little bit with it. So bear with me for two seconds. But growing up, I'm 53 years old. Okay. Okay. So I'm old enough to where we didn't, we stayed outside all the time. I had to cut the grass with push lawnmower. Grew up on two acres of grass. Got to push it, right? Hard work. So, and I grew up on the farm with my grandfather, like I've already told you. So all of my summers are like that. So I remember. You know, in the 80s, we didn't have air conditioning. I mean, we had air conditioning, but we didn't run the air conditioning all day, mm. every day like we do now. My parents turned it on when it was necessary to turn it on. So during a normal day in the country when I grew up, the windows were, were open. Open, yeah. Looks like right? Closer. So I remember, man, those days cutting the grass, right? And you know what fresh cut grass smells like. It's amazing, yeah. And I had a horse out back. Um, I lived in the country, so there was the pine and all that stuff. And I would cut the grass and go inside. And you can't be sweaty and stinking your mother's house. Right? Nah, nah. So I would cut the grass and go inside. And, you know, you after you do, some, do something like that and you take that shower, first thing you're going to do on a warm summer day, man, is fall asleep. Oh, immediately. You yeah. fall asleep under the window. Now you got that good sleep because the slobber's <sighs> on your hand. You know, you wake up. You're like, oh, but you've only been asleep for 30 minutes, but it feels okay. like you've been asleep for like three hours. Yeah. But you wake up and you're like days, right? Uh-huh. 
I would wake up like that, man, and the first thing that would capture me is the gardenia blowing in on the warm air. Yeah. Because my parents had a gardenias under all the windows. Oh, that's so smart. Right. And so that would blow in on the air, and I would wake up, and I would catch it, and I would catch the grass at the same time. And then, I, you know, I associate the dirt because I sat on the, gra- on the tractor with my grandfather wearing a seat out on my pants. So there's always that dirt and those white greens flying down. Mm. You know, so I just I see that with the with the grass and the dog and gardenias. And there was always honeysuckle. I wrote a speech in college one time about how the honeysuckle is just always in the summertime where I grew up, mm-hmm. perfume in the air. Mm-hmm. And it's not summer unless you're eating watermelon. And my grandmother made a coconut pie, something like that. All of those oh, that things. is the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that experience for me is what I call my summer in Sumter. Wow. And my last fragrance is called Summer in Sumter. And you just smell it. I have to it bring you like to the studio. You didn't have to. My, my yeah. wife, her family, they're from Sumter. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's why you're saying it. all this stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm like, yo, you better stop playing. Good Lord, yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. mess with her today. Like, <laughs> like, you missed out. You missed out. She's like, I told you she came because she her friends in town and she has me. I was yeah. like, mm, she was supposed to come by with me today. But, yeah. man, I got to shake your hand on that, brother. I yeah, appreciate I'm you. Just, I greatly appreciate you coming. Yeah, um, I appreciate you. you having me. I know um, we're going to wrap up, but uh, just, just to say, man, we do appreciate you bringing everything in and sharing your stories with us, um, your experience, your expertise. I didn't even bother you about anything about lobbying or anything. Right. Because yeah. I didn't have to. I didn't have to. <laughs> I'm going to get you next time. Right. But um, I do want to sign off. This is DJ and what? Tamaya. Skip in the back. Yep. And our esteemed guest. Thanks for having me, man. I'm we appreciate you, Mr. Howard. Thank, Thank you for joining you. us today. Um, Until next time, tell somebody next to them that you love them, that you care about them, uh, and we will see you later. Peace.